Hi guys, welcome to Power In and welcome to Motivation Monday. So in this video, I wanted to talk about a mistake that I learned a new nurse made the other day on the job. And that was that instead of giving two units of insulin, she gave 20. She unfortunately mistaken the two on the insulin vial to mean actually two units instead of 20. Um, this insulin vial was checked by a senior nurse who obviously was distracted as well and did not notice that she gave 20 instead of 2. Ultimately, the patient was fine, but of course giving 20 units instead of 2 units is a big deal. You've really got to watch that patient very closely. And um, so anyways, um, the reason I wanted to talk about it though was because every time that I've made a mistake and every time that I've looked at the mistake from a different point of view, i.e. meaning I'm having a meeting with basically my superiors and we're examining what happens, these mistakes seem so silly. And you wonder how you made the mistake to begin with. Um, what I've always noticed is that um, when you do examine the details, one thing that you do leave out is the amount of distractions that us nurses have. Um, yes, when you look at the facts in a very quiet environment, when you're just looking at the one, two, threes of the events that led to that um, mistake, yes, it's very clear as day. Um, any five-year-old probably would understand that that was the wrong thing to do. Um, but that's not the world we live in. The world we live in is a world where one patient might be falling out of the bed and you're worried that they're going to fall and break their hip. Another patient might be calling you every two seconds for pain medication. A doctor that you don't have the, the best relationship with may have said something to you and complained about something. So your mind is clouded with emotions. So there's all these different factors that a lot of people don't consider when you're just looking at the facts. There's a few ways that I've learned to deal with this. And the first thing is before I'm giving any medications, I do a sort of a timeout. Take some deep breaths. I look at the medication and I examine what each one is. It does take a little bit more time, but at the same time, I'm saving time because I'm making less mistakes. Nobody's perfect, no process is ever perfect, but that does help. The other thing is, the things that I can control, I try to limit their effect on me. For example, if the phone ringing super loud distracts my focus, then I turn my ringer down. Not to the point where I can't hear the ringer, but I turn it down to the point where it doesn't completely interrupt my thought process and I can you know, focus on what I was focusing on, then say, okay, let me get this phone call, but it doesn't distract me as much. So that's another thing. Um, if there's ever people that uh, really distract my focus and on a consistent basis, I may just request to work in a different area, maybe on the opposite side of the building, just say I need a little break from that person. And that can have a huge impact. Um, people's energies at certain times are just not going to um, resonate with you. And there's nothing wrong with that. We're all you know, different and we all have different beliefs and feelings. And sometimes I think it's, it's perfectly fine to protect yourself. You know, in life, we have two decisions. We can either choose an opportunity to serve or we can choose to withdraw from service. And there's, there's nothing wrong when it's um, ethical and you're not gonna get in trouble with your job to withdraw from a situation. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. I do that when I can, if I need to. And don't feel bad about that. There's certain people and certain situations or maybe even certain patients that you just might need a break from. And I encourage you to do that within your scope of capabilities. <laughs> and if it doesn't work out, if you can't take a team somewhere else, or if you need to work with that person, you just do the best you can, but um, ultimately it'll all work out in the end either way. But you know, you just do the best you can to make it as comfortable as possible. Another thing that I've noticed when I'm making mistakes is I have a lot of questioning in my mind and this questioning can get drowned out by the stress. I might say, you know, I have three people calling for pain and my director's already called me saying that somebody called them complaining that I wasn't giving pain medication. And then that might prompt me to make a quick decision 
and not listen to the identifiers that were saying I was about to make a mistake. Every mistake that I've made, I've really had that soft, still voice that I drowned out. So now that I've made a few mistakes, I know what that voice sounds like and I listen to it more often. And if I need to have a conversation with the director saying I can't handle three patients that have Q3 pain medications, then I will do that and maybe we'll switch a patient with somebody else in order that the workload is doable. So another thing that I wanted to mention is from day one in nursing school, they teach you to prioritize. You have to know your patient load and know where you need to prioritize. The, the problem is that when it comes to customer service, which seems to be what the hospital focuses on, they don't take prioritization into account. Um, the way I deal with this is I always try to be very factual. So if somebody comes to me and says, I need this done right away, I say, absolutely. I have a few other things that I have to do prior to that unless you're willing to help and you would like to do those few things for me. Um, if you have time, that would be wonderful. I always say it in a very, very nice way. But otherwise, I need to take care of this blood pressure or I need to see my patient that just came back from surgery right now. There's just a few things that I have to do before I do this. Quickly giving a cap of what your patient load entails sort of gives people a bigger picture. They may get a call from a family that's complaining that we're not taking patients to the bathroom. But in reality, it's nine o'clock in the morning and we've taken that patient to the bathroom four times and we've neglected the other patients because of that. So in reality, you do have to give sort of a quick recap or maybe a quick, not, not even a recap, it's a quick introduction to your patient load and have them understand that you are doing the best that you can and you know if there's anything else that they would recommend you're open to that but you really do have to do what you have to do in order to prioritize the patient load so i do try to come across in a very pragmatic way i try to show no emotions i try to just be very flat about it and make sense you know like i want to say okay this is a priority, this is dangerous, this is a little bit less dangerous, this is also dangerous, and this is the most minimally dangerous, and so I will attack my <laughs> plan of care unless you have a different solution or a suggestion. So always be open to suggestions. This just shows that you're doing the best you can, you're a team player, but you also are flexible and willing to learn different things and stuff like that. So anyways, the ultimate lesson that I want you to take away from this is that we are all going to make mistakes. This is a job that it's not black and white. There's so much going on that I don't know any nurse that hasn't made a mistake. I mean, it's just part of the job. But knowing that you can recover from this, you can learn from it, and ultimately it'll just make you a better person, a better nurse is the best lesson or the greatest lesson that I wanted to share with you. So all right guys, let's have a wonderful week and I cannot wait to see you again next week. I love you guys so much, bye.